Welcome back to CWS Christian Writing and Speaking. I'm your host, Jackie Wilson. And for our last two episodes, we have had the privilege of speaking with Arthur Darla Noble. In this final episode with her, we will explore one of the concepts she brought up during her previous interview, which was, what place does self-help have in a Christian's life when we already have God? Let's get started. So, Darla, one of the issues that you brought up during the interview is this concept of railing against self-help. A lot of people focus on, I'm going to help myself. And I do believe that we can position ourselves in better positions to move forward in life. But I want to hear hear more about this and um, um, why it came about that you say, we are here to help God and allow him to lead. And of course, we know that's biblical. I just, um, I think of scriptures like do everything you do as if unto the Lord, Mm. um, to be salt and light so that he can see our good works, which says we are to be doing things and to use our talents, but we are to do our good works so that they will glorify our father who is Mm. in heaven. So, God first in all things. Um, I think of Job when he says, you you know, he's pouring out his heart and he's, you know, why did you do this? I love you, Lord. I know that you are over all things, but why, why'd you even make me if this was what it was going to be like? And, Mm. you know, and God says, let me just ask you a few questions now. Where were you when I did this? Where were you when I did this and this and this and this for chapters? And Job's like, I'm just going to put my hand over my mouth and be quiet because I do not know what I am talking about. And so it just reminds me that God first, we are to do, we are created to do good works that he planned for us when he made us fearfully and wonderfully like in Psalm 139, but, um, but it's, it's for God, you know, it's for God and and I read a quote, and I'm I'm not even going to say which book it was in because I'm not sure, so I don't want to miss. But but the author was talking about um, about Jesus being enough for our worship service instead of all the gimmicks and the hype and everything that so many churches are are falling privy to and focusing on. And she was like, she was she she said some wonderful things, but she said. Our focus needs to be on serving, not being a somebody. Mm. We are somebody because we are God's child, but we need to focus on serving instead of being a somebody. And so that's, that's my, you know, that's where I come to this from, you know, is, is to, to be God's helper and not um, ask him to help us. Yeah, I definitely think there is a fallacy in the mindset that um, we have to become something when God has already said we are something. When he made us in his image, we became something at that moment because we are reflective of a great God. And that is definitely a message that I try to drive home to people. You don't have to expire to be a specific thing because God has already put you here for a purpose. The question is, what is it that that he wants you to do while you're here on earth? Ultimately, yes, our purpose is to glorify God. But how are you going to do it? You may be an author. You may be a plumber and just share the word of God while you're doing, right. you're doing your work. You know, you That's may right. you may be a garbage man. Whatever it is, whatever, mm-hmm. like the scripture says, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to glorify God with that. And this idea, yes. like I said, that we have to become something. Be the best mm-hmm. at whatever position God puts you in and he will elevate you. And I do tell people all the time, I said, now there are things that you can do to improve. Um, If you know, if like skills and um, so definitely do that. Anything that can help um, on your skills, so to speak, try to do that. 
But ultimately, you need to do that towards the fact that we are trying to glorify God and that you're trying to be all that God created you to be. Right. Exactly. Well said. <laughs> but I love this. And tell me more about um, what your experience has been encountering people who are struggling with this whole idea of becoming or saying, oh, I have to go to this self-help conference or I have to read this book or you have to, you know, tell me a little bit more about that. What has been your general experience? Well, I, um, I think that it's basically people, people jump on back bandwagons, so mm. to speak, you know, and, and they are so we, not they, we, we are all, um, wanting that sense of fulfillment and purpose. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, people look for it in, in things or in, in somebody that is successful or because, because society has told us that bigger and brighter and better is best. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Jesus wasn't like that, you know? And mm -hmm. so it, 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 it's almost too simple to be the right thing they mm. said you know people people you know in their mind but um you know just if if they'll just take the time to to read god's word if they'll just take the time to look at your life if and if you make sure if we as christians would um would take more effort we need to every day our first thought needs to be how can people see jesus in us today yeah and you know and i'm home most every day just me and the dog <laughs> <laughs> so you know i don't so i use my words my writing my blogs my books um you know to do that um we one thing that that all of this pandemic stuff and everything has done that I think has been a positive is made people more conscious of their home and, and their family and being at home and making home a, a wonderful, more comfortable, safe, nurturing environment. And, um, and one thing I really like to share with people on doing that is to create memories, to use um, this time to be with family, to tell stories, to join together, um, you know, with your kids and your grandkids and share, make memories and share old ones, make new ones and share old ones. And, um, and in that you can share your faith, going back to the verse in Hebrews, Hebrews, remember your leaders, um, you know, tell stories and look at pictures um, about your grandkids or about your grandparents and your great grandparents, um, you know, just bring that connection and, and weave that faith into real people because, because if you can say those things and share those stories about that, um, you know, about those, you know, Jesus with, through the eyes of other people, you know, that sort of thing, people that they can relate to see pictures of, um, or who they know, it makes it more real to them, just mm -hmm. like the whole chocolate with the kids and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, um, you know, for example, when you said something about it doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a trash man or a teacher or, you know, whatever, I, I thought about my grandpa, who was very, um, important to me, but he was a farmer. And then he also was, um, a, a gas truck driver. He delivered propane to, mm -hmm. and filled people's propane tanks. He was a very, very quiet and shy man. Um, but a few weeks after he died, um, uh, at church, we got a letter from a, from a couple who was in their forties and they wrote and they said that they still got the weekly church letter and that they had learned of Pete's passing. And he said, I just had to share something with you. Mm -hmm. When we moved to Rolla, uh, he delivered the gas to the little house we were renting. They came there as students of the mm -hmm. university 
And as he was leaving and handing us the ticket, he just very quietly said, do y'all go to church? And my wife said, well, we just moved here and we're, we will be looking for one. And he pulled out a little um, piece of paper that he cut out of the weekly bulletin that had the church's address and the time. He said, we'd love to have you join us. Hmm. Well, they did. And they were there for their entire four years of their ministry and served in the church. He said, and they said, you know, it was just that simple little, we'd like to have you join us from a very shy man who very said, said very little that gave us our church family for the next four years. And so, you know, um, I cut that out of our church paper and I've shared that with my kids who never, he died um, when my oldest was nine months old. And so they never knew him. Um, and of course, my grandkids never knew him, but um, but I've shared that with them just so that they know who they come from and the kind of um, of faith that that built this family. So. Yeah, absolutely. It reminds me of when Paul was talking to Timothy, his faith yes. started with his mother and grandmother. Yes. Yes, and, exactly. And it, it's important for us to pass that on. If you pass on anything, mm -hmm. people talk about the type of legacy that you pass on. It is important to pass on that spiritual legacy. Exactly. But Darla, I have enjoyed talking with you today. It just so many nuggets here just from all three of your interviews. And I just want people to please take note, listen buy the books, connect with her to learn more. Tell people, how can they connect with you? Okay. I will love to connect with them on Facebook. It's just Darla Noble. I used to have an author page and everything, but eh, I just, <laughs> just be me. Okay. Just be me. So Darla Noble, um, I am public. My page is public. So send me a request. Um, and my website, which is D Noble Rights, W R I T E S dot com, and follow me. Um, you'll see links to all of my books on there. Um, I have a Twitter account, D Noble Rights. I, I'm kind of back and forth on that one, but uh, just I love to hear from you. You can email me at D Noble Rights, W R I T E S, at yahoo.com. Um, I answer all my emails. I um, do all my friend requests. I'm very active on Facebook as far as, and not just, you know, buy my books or whatever, you know, I, I always do lots of fun things, um, you know, Monday through Friday, there's something special about every day that we look, you know, throwback Thursdays or make something yummy Mondays and just all sorts of fun things um, just to get us talking to each other, because that's what it's all about is relationships with one another. Um, so that we can build each other up for Jesus. Amen. Well, you heard it from her people. Connect with her. Again, this has been a joy. And I just look forward to hearing more about what you are doing in the future. Thank you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, people, you heard today's episode. You learned how to connect with her. You got the lessons that you needed to hear. Until the next time, um, our next CWS episode. God bless you. See you next time.